hey guys how's it going so in this tutorial I'm gonna show you guys how to perform magnetic or like spin polarized calculations using quantum espresso and we'll be using its GUI BURAI to do so and I have already created a bunch of tutorials on BURAI and it, it is an excellent GUI for quantum espresso so this is another tutorial in that series and in this tutorial we'll be working on magnetic materials like iron cobalt and nickel now before we get into the tutorial I just want to show you guys uh, this DFT simulation database that I'm working on. So this is my blog called brightoff.com and I'm working on creating a DFT simulations database where basically I am studying various systems as you can see right here and I am posting the calculation results here so that it can help uh, people in the same community or in the field of computational material science. So you can go to my blog and then go to this DFT link here and then click on DFT simulations database and there I have you know till now I have like studied um, 15 or so systems like I mean there are some pretty basic systems like CDSE, ZNS, ZNSE, ZNS etc so NTIO2 so I have studied a few of the most important semiconductor systems till now now coming to the magnetic calculations that is the topic for this tutorial so on my blog I have studied three of the most important ferromagnetic materials that is iron, cobalt and nickel now uh, you know when I ran these calculations I was able to successfully reproduce the experimental magnetic moment up to you know a great accuracy so in my calculations resulted in a magnetic moment of 2.2 bore magneton and experimentally or you know or in other resources like in the textbook Kittel they have you know given the magnetic moment value per atom for the FE system to be 2.2 bore magneton so quantum espresso basically you know it can return the value of the magnetic moment per atom or per unit cell and then from that we can calculate the magnetic moment per atom and on my blog you, as you can see here uh, you know the way I study or provide the study is uh, first of all I provide the crystal structure and you can you know just go ahead and do whatever you want with it so uh, you can see that FE has a BCC crystal structure and you can even you know set it to spin and all that stuff so this uh, this is my blog and then I provide the source for the SIF file because it is very necessary to uh, you know acknowledge the contributions of others so for this tutorial we'll be using the same uh, crystallographic information file so that uh, you and I both can produce the same results so there is no discrepancy within our calculations so just go in and click on it and download the SIF file I have already downloaded it and it is uh, I have pasted it in my BRI uh, projects folder and it, it is by the name of AMS data um, and by the way on my blog I post a lot of stuff like uh, you know about the uh, system like I post a simulated power XRD pattern produced using Vesta I've already made a tutorial on how to do this so you can check that out on my channel then I provide all the necessary info input parameter information like what were the zero potential types what were the zero potential use what was the exchange correlational functional then what were the kind of energy cutoff for the wave function and charge density and the K mesh or the K grid and all that stuff so coming to the quantum espresso so let's you know begin uh, studying iron for this tutorial and let's see if we can produce the uh, magnetic moment that is found experimentally and I think that I will be able to do that as I've already done that on my blog so um, just go ahead and open BURAI 1.3 and since I pasted it uh, pasted the crystallographic information SIF file in the you know projects folder so it is available in BURAI folder here so just go ahead and uh, double click on it to open it so here we have the iron crystal and you can see that it has a BCC structure so uh, so in my blog what I do is before posting any final results what I do is I you know um, conduct a geometry optimization so uh, these are the optimized cell parameters that I use to calculate the magnetic moment 
so however even if we don't you know optimize our geometry we should get a magnetic moment which is somewhat closer or approximate to this value because we won't be optimizing our system in for this tutorials because we have you know just downloaded this file so we'll be running our calculations on the cell using the cell parameters or the atomic positions that were provided with this crystallographic information file so we won't be optimizing our system so our calculations may differ by a little bit but it should not make any significant difference so i just wanted to clear that up now considering the zero potential so in order to get a closer result to this calculation we should probably use the same zero potential however it should not matter what zero potential you are using but you should always you know get the same uh, magnetic moment but the reason i'm you know going to be choosing the same zero potential as in my blog is because um uh, because uh, the kinetic energy cutoffs and all these parameters depend on the kind of zero potential use so uh, since i've already you know file determined the kinetic energy cutoffs for this particular zero potential so i should rather just go ahead and use this particular zero potential only so i don't have to spend extra time in find out those values so just go ahead and select that and then come to the stf calculation so in my previous tutorials I've already shown you how to perform an STF calculation so I won't be going through all the other details unnecessary details so we'll just go ahead and see how to perform a magnetic STF calculation although I gave you a overview or an idea in one of my tutorials so coming back to my blog we can see that I have already you know converged my total energy versus the cutoff energy so here I have posted the variation of the total energy versus the cutoff kinetic energy cutoff for the wave functions so we can see that the uh, the convergent value is uh, like 45 Rydberg so after 45 Rydberg the change in the uh, total energy it's pretty small so um, let's j just use the same wave function kind of energy cutoff that is 45 Rydbergs in our um, calculation that is 45 and let's use a cutoff charge density as like 450 Rydbergs which would be like 10 times of that of the wave function cutoff so I think these uh, parameters are good and then we can provide a k-mesh grid and let's just stick to the values provided in the blog that is 8 by 8 by 8 again you get these values by converging the energy with respect to the k points and then the important thing to keep in mind now to run a spin polarizer or magnetic calculation is that you need to treat your system as a metal now if he's already a metal but even if it wasn't then you had to treat it as a metal so you have to keep your occupations as smearing now coming to the magnetization part so just click here and then set your polarization to collinear however BRI, all, uh, um, BRI um, by itself picks it up as a magnetic material so it has already provided a collinear polarization for it and then you have to provide a starting magnetization value now if you are a beginner or new here then you must be wondering how to find out what starting magnetization value means or um, what do you need to provide here so uh, basically a starting magnetization value you know breaks the spin or the time reversal symmetry of your system and it tells quantum espresso to perform a spin polarized calculation and the value here you know indicates that the how many electrons have the up spin or the down spin configuration so value of one indicates that all the electrons have are in the up spin configuration while a value of minus one indicates that all the electrons are in a down spin configuration however if you use any other you know decimal value like 0 0.5 that means that 50 percent of the electrons have the up spin so basically positive sign means up spin negative signs means means down spin and the uh, you know the fraction tells the fraction of electrons in that configuration now in order to find out what value should we use so what we do is we perform a bunch of calculations for different value of uh, starting magnetization like for 0 0.1 then for 0 0.2 then for 0 0.3 and so on and we find out um, for which value is the energy the lowest so similar to uh, you know how to determine the kinetic energy cutoff and how we determine the k grid so similarly we will find out the starting magnetization value so I have already mentioned that in my blog here in the database so I already told that we break the you know symmetry of the system and then we find out the lowest energy state and we choose that value as the starting magnetization so here I have performed a bunch of calculations for different starting magnetizations all the way from 0.1 to 1 
so here you can see that the lowest energy was found for 0 0.4 um, magneton uh, I'm sorry 0 0.4 static magnetization so here you can see that the energy is the lowest for this one so let's just stick to that and provide a 0 0.4 value here and that's it um, that's all you need to provide to uh, conduct a spin polarized calculation and coming back to the input file so you can notice two noticeable changes that is n spin is set to 2 and the starting magnetization is set to 0.2 so those are the only things that you need to set and um, we have uh, you know already discussed how to find out these values that is you converge them with respect to energies and all and we are using the CD potential that was used in my database so that's all just now you can just go ahead and run this calculation and it might take a some time so um, you will have to you know um, maybe um, wait like uh, for some time to uh, get the results so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just pause the video while this calculation takes place and then I'm gonna resume when I have the result okay so after 10 iterations the SCF is converged and we have got the total energy now if you go ahead and look into the output file then you will see some significant changes uh, with respect to these previous out, uh, output files when the um, uh, when we were conducting non-spin polarized calculations so this time in the end you would notice a total magnetization and an absolute magnetization value so basically absolute magnetization value is just a mod so it would always be greater than the total magnetization because in the total magnetization some magnetizations would be like cancelling each other due to the positive and negative signs so we have got like 4.53 bore magnitude or bore magneton per cell of the total magnetization now since you already know that the Fe lattice is of a BCC type so we have like two atoms effectively in it so one atom is at the center and then all these atoms at the corner contribute one eighth to this unit cell therefore uh, we have two atoms in our Fe lattice so basically the um, the total magnetization would be like per atom would be 4.53 divided by 2 which would be like 2.25 or something so uh, which is again pretty good approximation to the experimental value and then if you you know come up into the uh, output file then you will see that uh, at each iteration that uh, quantum espresso is calculating the total magnetization and absolute magnetization so here is all these values and then in the end you would see after the iterations have converged you will see that um, it calculates the magnetic moment per side so at uh, you know uh, at atom 1 the magnetic moment is around 2.32 and then at atom 2 it is around 2.3275 so and that is all you you know need to know how to conduct a spin polarized calculations now i will still uh, you know mention a few more things that might be very useful to you while conducting spin polarized calculations so um, in this tutorial i showed you the process on how to do it for ferromagnetic materials because uh, fe is a ferromagnetic material but sometimes what uh, you might have is an anti ferromagnetic material so in order to conduct a calculation for that what you will do is you will need to provide two ma starting magnetization values that if that is for some of the atoms you will provide the starting magnetization to be negative that is in downspin and for some of the atoms it would be positive so let's say um, we were to check whether iron was a ferromagnetic material or not I mean we know already that it is ferromagnetic but let's say we were to check it so what we would do is we will come back to the geometry tab and then here in the input file we will change it to this first Fe atom we will call it Fe1 and then we, call, we will call the second Fe atom as Fe2 and then we will similarly in the atomic species we will repeat the same process and we will define two atomic species called Fe1 and Fe2 and then click here so that these changes are reflected then coming back to the STF then you will be able to define two starting magnetization values so you will just you know go ahead and define uh, the starting magnetization for the first atom to be some positive value and then the starting magnetization for the second atom to be some negative value so or you know uh, in this process so um, now if you will you know run your SCF calculations and in the end what you would notice is that 
uh, your system would automatically you know uh, change its uh, magnetizations and still you will again in the end get the answer or the uh, result to be that Fe is a ferromagnetic material but in case if it were a anti ferromagnetic material then you will get the total magnetization to, in the end to be zero so that's all I guess and uh, that's all the information that I could give in this tutorial I guess and I have already discussed that um, what do the non collinear and other you know calculations mean and like how you can provide an external field using this uh, option so I've already covered that in a separate tutorial on how to run a STF calculation using BRI and, and quantum espresso so I guess that would be all let me just go ahead and see how what other things I could have told you okay so coming to the band structure so there's not much to you know different to calculate a spin polarized density of states and band structures so what you do is basically you just perform the usual band structure calculation with just two changes that is you provide the starting magnetization and as well as the end spin parameter to be two. and similarly in the DOS or the density of states calculation you will again do the same thing that is you will provide an end spin value to be two so that it pro, uh, performs in spin polarized calculation and then start starting magnetization so those are the only changes you need to make so um, in my studies what I was able to do was I was able to predict the um, correct magnetic moments for um, iron cobalt and nickel that is for iron we got 2.2 for cobalt which is uh, which has an HCB structure or the hexagonal close pack structure we got a value of like um, 1.6 to 5 bore magneton and for nickel we got a value of 0.6 something um, which is right here 0 0.6075 bore magneton and here you can see that all these values you know correspond to the values given in textbooks like Kittel and other experimental uh, results so I'm sorry for creating such a long video I thought this video would be short but again due to providing a lot of information I have extended it to pretty long but that's all I guess you need to know to perform a magnetic or spin polarized calculation and one more thing one more piece of information so when you perform a spin polarized calculation for a magnetic material then you will notice that you know the up spin and the down spin band structures do not overlap each other if this material were you know non-magnetic and if you pro, uh, perform an uh, spin polarized calculation then what you would notice is that the up spin and the down spin bands would overlap each other perfectly and similarly in the density of states there will be a perfect symmetry for the up spin and the down spin density of states but if your material is non magnetic then if and if you get such a density of states then it would imply that your material is magnetic so that's all and I have also provided the input files that I use in my you know database that I'm creating on my blog so you can check that out and you can check out some other references and resources that I have um, included there well that's it I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and found it useful and learned something from it and in case you did then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this thanks for watching and have a great day